ahead and worship him. Hallelujah. Go ahead and worship him. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you guys so much. You know, I just looked at the piano. You don't know that old uh, Akin. Do you know? Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Victory, victory, victory. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee Jesus, we have the victory. Now, if you believe it, say it one more time. Victory! Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Come on, give God praise. Yeah! Give him praise! Come on, give him a shout! Yeah! I got victory today! Hallelujah! Any victorious people in the house? Glory, 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 glory! Hallelujah! My God! Hallelujah! Glory to God. Father, we pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you would exceed our expectations. There'll be no limitations to the move of your spirit in the outpouring of your glory. Have your way. Move, Holy Ghost. Change us, make us, rearrange us. Hallelujah. God, we, we, we take this opportunity to serve notice on the devil who torments. We bind you up in the name of Jesus. We declare victory in our mind, victory in our heart, victory in our soul. Hallelujah. Victory in our spirit, victory in our finance. I just got victory. Anybody got victory right now? Give God glory. Hey, 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 my God, my, hey, glory, 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 my God, my God, woo, woo, so tell me who can stand me for us when we call. One more shout. I said, give it one more shout. Shout like it's your last time you're going to shout. Shout like it's the last time you're going to dance. Shout like you've been set free by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes. Hey, 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 hey. My God, my God, my God. Okay, okay, sit down. We got work to do. Oh, we got work to do. Oh, we got work to do. My, 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 my. Hey! Glory to God. My God, my God. My Jesus. 
Jesus. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, okay. All y'all musicians got to go away. I got work to do. Got work to do. Got work to do. Yee. All right, let us compose ourselves. Because he real good. If you kind of maybe think he could be good, then that's a certain kind of praise. But when you know he's good. Okay, no, 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 Okay, 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 okay. We got we got work. Huh? We got work, we got work, we got work. We gotta get in the word. We gotta get in the word. For those of you who are guests, you just came on a good day. <laughs> you came on a day when God got magnified, He got glorified, He got lifted up. He was celebrated as the King of Kings. He was celebrated as the Lord of Lords. He's the one that can lift you up out of darkness and put your feet on a rock to stand. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, sit down. This is it. This is it. This is it. Sit down. I'm gonna preach. You get up, you get up, you get up, you get up. All y'all go off the stage. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, I'm gonna get this word out, y'all. Okay, sit down, sit down. Welcome to Bethel World Outreach Church. I'm your senior pastor, Pastor James Lowe. Uh, it, it might be my Nigerian katan I'm wearing to celebrate. Africa today. I don't know. All right, we got work to do. The spirit of fear plagues our world. This is a spirit that wants to neutralize you. When the spirit of fear comes in your life, you feel immobilized. You think about what you cannot do, what you should not do, and even when the thing is good for you or good to you, you are not as apt to lean into it, you lean away from it. The spirit of fear is a robber and it is a thief. It is a whisperer and it is a seducer. And when we look at the first entrance of the spirit of fear coming in, it was after a woman named Eve disobeyed God and God came looking for her. And he said, what's going on? He said, we heard your voice and we were afraid. Why? Would people of God be afraid of the voice of God unless they've been invaded by a force that is not from God? What has invaded this world that it can come? Well, where I'm from in Detroit, when we're around this time of year, November 1st is All Saints Day. So then November, October 31st would then be All Hallows Eve or Halloween. But in Detroit, we added a day on the 30th. And that's called Devil's Night. And in Devil's Night, it's a real thing if you look it up. The highest accounts of arson in our nation happened in Detroit on Devil's Night. Because somebody invited the spirit of the enemy to do what it wanted, when it wanted, where everyone would just relax and allow some type of demonic purge to happen. Even though the scripture tells us not to give place to the devil, he's been given a place to sit and arrest, not just in the world, but perhaps in our lives. Sitting there, making a home. So when you should be advancing, you're in fear. When you should be building, you're in fear. When you should be celebrating and relating, you're in fear. It is a spirit, and we've given way to it. And my whole life, this strong African 
American man that you see before you now was weak and beggarly. And I would be so afraid of the dark, afraid of my family, afraid of going out into the neighborhood. I would get a knife in the middle of the night and I wouldn't sleep and I would just stay up all night stabbing into the darkness because our house had been broken into, our cars had been stolen. Somebody had threatened my life multiple, multiple times. And what happens over time is that you think the enemy has a power that's greater than the power of God and it paralyzes you from any level of advancement. Today, when we look at Mark 5, we're going to see Jesus attack this narrative that was attacked, that was coming against the world then and is coming against the world now, telling you, you have no hope for tomorrow. It's a lie. It tells you, why are you even waking up? Why do you even care? Why are you trying to do the right thing? It doesn't matter what you do. Do whatever you want to do. It is satanic and demonic whisperings, and it calls fear and ensnarement and entrapment and bondage, and I'm coming after that spirit in this place today. Perhaps you didn't know That God, when he saves humanity, does not just give them eternal life. He gives them deliverance from demonic oppression of the mind and the spirit and of the body. And in Mark 5, as we turn there, we'll deal with it. For those of you who are unfamiliar with tag team preaching and somebody reading the scripture and somebody preaching the scripture, I'm going to do that today. I'm going to have my friend, Pastor Dave Ward, read, and I'm going to begin to preach. We're not in a fight with one another. As I say to him, probably demonstratively, read, stop, go again. You know, he, 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 I'm not, he's, he's my friend. He loves me. Uh, it's not some, we're not having an argument. We really work together well. I just didn't want y'all to be surprised. Go ahead, Pastor Dave, read it in your nice reading voice oh my nice reading voice not the other one (laughs) mark chapter 5 beginning in verse 1 mark 5 reading from verse 1 they came to the other side Mm -hmm. of the sea to the country of the gerasenes and when jesus had stepped out of the boat immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit He lived among the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain, for he had often been bound with shackles and chains. But he wrenched the chains apart, and he broke the shackles in pieces. That's a strong demon. He didn't broke chains. Read. No one had the strength to subdue him. Night and no day. human being had the strength to solve a spiritual problem in natural means. Read. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. Crying out with a loud voice, he said, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For Jesus was saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now, a great herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. Right when I was reading this last service, Pastor James Holly leaned over to me and said, oink, oink, right there. Right, just right in the middle of the reading. Yeah. Right there, oink, oink, it, it right happens. in my ear. Now, a great herd of pigs was oinking, feeding there on the hillside. And they begged him, saying, send us to the pigs. Let us enter them. So he gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the pigs and the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the sea. Now let's contextualize what is happening. Jesus, in the beginning of this chapter, had already been 
taking power and authority over spirits. It was a, a woman named Mary who had seven spirits. She cast, he cast seven devils out of Mary. Then there was somebody else that was sick uh, at Peter's house, and they were afflicted by a devil, and, and, and he began to uh, cast that spirit out. Then he began to teach them the power that is in the Word and what the Word can do. And after that teaching, he told them, let's get in a boat and go to the other side. And then there was a demonic wind that tried to stop them, and they didn't know what to do with their human strength. They, they, they began to call on Jesus, don't you care? And Jesus used his power and his authority, and he rebuked the wind. That's how you know it was demonic. He, 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 he rebuked it, and he spoke to the waves. So the rebuking was for the spiritual part, and then he put the natural natural part in order so so you know that was going on and then but the word was get in the boat disciples and go to a place you don't want to go and the moment that God tells you to do something there's a demonic wind that is a sign to stop you go to another city a demonic wind is a sign Go to another school, a demonic wind is a sign. Go to another community, to another house, to another workplace. I want you to get out of this and do that. Wherever he speaks his word, there's an assignment from a demonic force to stop you. Isn't it funny that God doesn't do anything until you ask him for the help? That means he believes you have the ability to speak to it. He told his disciples, you should have been able to do this, but you don't have faith. You don't have the word. That means you're with me, but you don't know enough about me to get the stuff that I'm, I've assigned you to get off of you, off of you. And then he gets to the other side where not Jewish people are, but where Gentile people are. So much funny that society segregates itself at every p possible opportunity. We segregate politically. Uh, gender. Everyone's separating from one another. But God is always interested in cross-cultural, cross-gender ministry. Amen. He sends them to people they don't like. And they despise. And when he gets out of the boat, I want you to notice that the disciples who were in the boat with the same word to go to the other side never got out. They never got out. And one of the things... That happens when you don't move and he's telling you to move is that the demonic assignment against you has paralyzed you. In that text, you see that they were afraid. And the moment that I start saying this sermon is about demons being cast out, just so you know. Somebody already get offended. Oh, that should be done in private. Why are they talking about that in the open? <clears throat> it's a little bit much. Hope I make it through this shirt. And then something, what? I'm going to tell you who's not telling you that stuff. God. He ain't telling you none of that. So now when he gets out of the boat, a man who is described as naked, living among the dead, can't be, used to be able to be bound, as scripture says, and now they can't bind him. That means he's increasing in strength. Another version of the Bible says he's guarded by people, but he can keep breaking the chains, and now they're just letting the naked boy just run free. But I believe it is a description of culture and society now. More comfortable around dead things than living things. More comfortable with dead conversations, dead relationships, dead words, dead environments. Just comfortable trying to live out a life necromancing and living against the dead stuff. And now the temptation is to cut yourself and hurt yourself and off yourself and expose yourself. When you see people, human beings, exposing themselves, wearing things that are immodest, something is driving that, and it ain't God's spirit. And when 
even though the Bible says give no place to the devil, you can't give him a place to land. You can't give him a place to rest. You can't give him a place to build nests and to roost because when you invite him in, he's going to come in and you say, well, I never invited the devil in, so I'm good. Okay. All right. Let's find out how that evil spirit got in. How about that? Let's just talk about it. The enemy cannot demonize you without your permission. That means there's some level of a touch point or agreement where you allowed him to come in. So he might come in in the ear gate. You think it ain't nothing wrong with what you listen to. What's your radio? I'm, and I'm not coming again. If you want to be however you want to live this life. But there are certain things that if you listen to them long enough, they put you in a hypnotic state and they make you repeat things that invite spirits to come into your life because the words, they are spirit. They are spirit. Words are spirit. So it's connected to something. I don't know what's wrong with my child. What they listening to? I don't even want to name some of the artists. It's just wrong. You know it's wrong. You know, you know if you just was honest with yourself, that ain't got nothing to do with God. But, but you say, I'm all right. It don't bother me. I could do, I could do all this and still be fine. But that's what a lying and the deceiving and the seductive spirit does. It tells you. Wrong is right and right is wrong. Good is evil and evil is good. It's a perverse spirit. It's a familiar spirit. How did it get in? Through the eye gate. You want, throw me my phone, throw me my phone, throw me my phone. Real, real, real fast, real fast. You didn't throw it and I wasn't fast, but it's all right. Yeah, he want, the enemy wants you to scroll. Ain't nothing wrong with scrolling. Where is scrolling wrong in the Bible? Show me, Pastor James. Show me where it's wrong. Show me what's scrolling is wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with scroll. <laughs> I think it must be a spirit of scroll. Because it robs, because it's a thief. It robs you of time. It robs you of your mind. It just robs you of the scroll. Why am I scroll? I can't stop. Oh, oh, what's the next one? What's the next one? What's the next one? <laughs> and then. And then, oh Lord, help me get through the service. And then your little innocent spirit, because it is innocent. The enemy on a weak moment and a weak day gives you a quick suggestion that you stay, that you just look at half a second. And then the AI algorithm say, they kind of maybe possibly like that. They're intrigued. And all of a sudden, a feed that was benign, a feed that was simple, start giving you other suggestions. And now, you just see them so many times, you don't want to stop on them. And then some tell you, well, just figure out what it is. Are you just investigating? And then you park and stop. And that spirit say, thank you for inviting me in. I now know I'm welcome. And we have opened a door for more of us to come. Thank you. Touch. It's not just in what you, you, you let in the eye gate or the ear gate. What you touch. Because once he gives you to think, think it, and once he gets you to look at it, the only thing next is to touch it. So now your personification has taken on a demonic disposition. The sensuality that you looked at becomes the sensuality that you accentuate. And now you're just walking around and you got something loose on you. You got something that attracts some other spirit in another person. And all of a sudden, somebody touched you that shouldn't touch you. And you don't even deserve something rubbed against you. That shouldn't rub against you. Now you got an appetite where you want to have something that you shouldn't have. And it's all demonic. That's it. That's it. And he's got to convince you, ain't nothing wrong with this. And when you're in your right mind, you know it's all wrong. And right now, the enemy will talk to you and say, just endure this sermon. You don't have to change nothing. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you, you're going to have to change. I'm going to pray over you today. You ain't going to get to be the same. I'm coming. 
I'm coming. What, what Dion say? He coming? I'm coming. In the name of the Lord. He said, he gets out the boat or the ship. And I can imagine that the man, not the spirit, is walking toward Jesus. Why? Because the spirit knows who he is. He's just in a partnership with a host. Letting you do a little bit where you want. He does a little bit what he wants. But the man got too close to Jesus. And Jesus saw him and he said, oh, no. Oh, Lord. I'm sorry. I know you are God. I know you have the right to take me out of this place. But I'm begging you. This man is in an agreement with me for me to stay here. So don't make me leave my house. He said it was okay. Jesus, though, is not there on his own will. He showed up there based on a word for, to go to the other side. He had an assignment with that guy. And a lot of us have an assignment to do something you can't, you can't back away from. Then he said, what's your name? Now, I don't believe that Jesus is asking the name so we can... We can you know, start having conversations with devils. Right, right, right. Now, if you're getting that out of the scripture, just don't read that part. Because it's going to hurt you. I don't think you're strong enough. Because the Bible say, Michael the archangel, when he talking to devils, all he say is, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. That's it. So, if Michael... Won't even give a railing accusation. He don't even say, you nasty devil. You crazy devil. Ah, God is coming after you, devil. You old slew foot. He ain't, he, ain't doing, he ain't doing none of that. See, I ain't messing with this man. This man convinced a third of the angels. Now, just for the, you Bible scholars who, I just want you to know, there's no verse in the Bible that defines who the demons are. There are speculation that the demons are are. Uh, the fallen angels. Some say that they're the offspring of the sons of God, which were angels mating with a human being. But no, nobody really know. All we know is they can jack up your life. How about that? Jack my life up. <laughs> That's it. That's all you need to know. When you're in a partnership with them, they tell you how to destroy your life. They can't destroy it. He was cutting himself. The enemy was telling him, just, just, you know what? Just touch it. Just taste it. Just do it. Just break it. Just run free. Be free. Do what you want to do. Why are they binding you up? Break them chains. Why are they holding you back? Break that stuff. He always tell you to rebel. Jesus asked the name so that the man could know he was arrested by something. He'd partnered with 6,000 demons and their name was Legion. The destiny of this man was so great it took 6,000 spirits to hold him back. And when Jesus, the king of kings, you got to understand his power. When Jesus, fully man, fully God, armed himself and stepped into the life of another man. He did not ask that man's permission to get the devil out. He doesn't need that. You don't need permission to bind the devil. You do need wisdom to bind him. Wisdom to cast him out. The devil knowing he gonna lose, he said, hey listen, I know I gotta go. I know that my Eternal assignment is the abyss, the bottomless pit, the little lake. I know that's my eternal place. But I think we're ahead of the time schedule that you gave us. So I'm just asking since I have permission from him and I know it ain't time for me to go to the place I don't come back from. Can we just, uh, how about them pigs over there? Yes, I... It'll just be deviled ham. It'll be all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they went in. 
And the spirits ran off a cliff immediately. 2,000 pigs ran off a cliff and killed themselves because that's the murdering spirit he is. The Bible says Satan was a murderer from the beginning and a liar from the beginning and he wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And what a spirit that makes himself think it's just a little look, it's just a little listen, it's just a little touch, it's just a little taste. He wants you to think it's just something little, but he wants to wreck your life to steal your marriage to steal your hope to steal your dream but I'm coming after that spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus today that spirit's got to go and let you go and loose you because here's the best news I can give you no matter how bound up you are Jesus Christ can and will set you free Verse 14. Verse 14. He's so calm. Now, you don't want to match my voice. You just want to. I mean, I'm, I'm like here, and then you're like, now, in, verse, in verse 14. That, Pastor James, you know half the room will be offended right away. <laughs> Thank you. That's true. Go ahead, Dave. Be yourself. I love it. All right. The herdsmen fled and told it in the city and in the country, and people came to see. What that fled that is denoting like running away afraid. So what was driving them? They saw other demons getting cast out. They said, oh, let's get out of here. <laughs> Hold on, Pastor James. Now you mean to tell me there was more than one demonized man in that crowd? Is that what you're trying to say? In, 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 first of all, in, 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 uh, in Matthew's version, it said it was two, of the men, two men came. Yeah. But I'm telling you that Jesus was telling the story so that everyone could be free. That's right. Can you read? Can you read? The herdsmen fled and told it in the city and in the country, and people came to see what it was that had happened. And see, people came to see. They want to see something. Today when we pray for demonic deliverance, if you didn't know, we're about to pray for you today. In this service, it's going to happen. Coming out in this service. Got to go in this service. Okay? So, what happens is people want to witness something. They just want to see kind of what's going on. Like people see a fight and they want to go to the fight. What makes people want to go to a fight instead of break it up? It's demonic. I want to see that. I want to see evil. What makes them want to see evil? Why did he tell... Uh, Lot and his wife when I'm destroying the city don't look back at what I'm doing what is it that we want to see then she looked back and got stuck read they came to Jesus and saw the demon possessed man the one who had had the legion sitting there clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid now the scripture did not say before he was sitting there with Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, that they were afraid when he is cutting them, living in tombs, naked, running around, terrorizing everybody. It's like they thought his life was a joke. Like, hey, let's go out there and see the naked man today. Just stay away. Hey, hey naked boy. Don't get too close. He'll grab you. We looking at society naked, broken full of the dead, using them as entertainment when we're sitting here with the answer. Why am I being entertained by necromancers and demonic spirits? And here's the thing. Something in us is whispering because I hear that spirit. I'm not closing my gate because I like it too much. So... If the spirits couldn't come into him without a partnership, well, oh, what's, put, put Romans, uh, if I have Romans 6 up there. Romans 6, 16. Uh, you might have to go back. Okay. Okay, yeah. Do, do you not know that who you present yourselves if, to anyone to, as obedient slaves, you are his slaves? The whom you obey? Well, I'm saved. God, God lives on the inside of me. I can he, you presented yourself, demoniac. You presented yourself. 
He said, whoever you are, if you present yourself. Yes, God owns your house if you're born again, but a thief can come in there and start stealing stuff. You don't call the thief the owner. You just say he's somebody that need to get kicked out. But he in there. Demonize, the, they use the wrong word saying possession. If God's got you, the demon can't have you, but he can invade you by your permission. Don't give in to this. Don't obey this. Read the last part of that. And they began to beg Jesus to depart from their region. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed with demons begged him that he might be with him. And he did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. Because the reason... He set you free. And so you can set others free. And people who are not free don't tend to set others free. You know, as a born again believer, I remember a time in my life. How could a born again believer be in depression? How could a born again believer despise their life and not want to live? They just want to get out. They just want relief. What have we let into our lives that has entrapped us? Where have we given a place? I remember sitting uh, 12 years ago, 15 years ago, something like that, in a church service in Detroit. And you might be where I was, sitting in a church service, thinking you were free. But in actuality, you were bound given permission by the person you allowed to live on the inside of you to go to church, to deceive you that you're all right, knowing that you are wrong, telling you all the while the word is going forth that you're free when you're actually bound. And I was the last person that the woman of God prayed for. and She called me up. Hold on, I got to sneeze. Hold on. It's trying to go away. Okay. So maybe it was a tickle. And I went up with a broken and a contrite spirit. I went up with an open-handedness before Jesus to walk in the light. I went up with a re repentant disposition. I went up understanding that I haven't named what I got into partnership with, but something that ain't God been partnered on the inside of me. And I remember as a woman, God began to pray for me. I began to feel just like I'm choking. And, and what the spirit that had a hold of me, Sometimes when the spirit's coming up, you cough. Some people feel the sensation to throw up. Some people begin to weep profusely. Some people begin to shake violently. Some people have different reactions, but the spirit never will be given permission to hurt you. Ever. Nothing can hurt you, but you can't be free. The greatest deception that can happen is, is 1 John. He said, if we say we have no sin, we lie. Make him. And we do not the truth. Sin has a consequence. It opens a door. Sin has a consequence. It opens a door. And you don't want it, a door open in your life. So I'm about to pray for you. And I'm going to give you seven things you need to do, and then I'm going to say some prayers over you. And at the end, you might begin to feel a release. And I don't want you to feel weird about it. Some of you will feel like a holler, like you're being released from a prison. Think about how re relieved you'd be on the day you got released from a jail sentence. It's like that, okay? Some of you, because sickness and demonic activity work together, you're going to get well. Some people... That sickness comes up. 
But part of the inheritance of salvation is deliverance. And you are about to get delivered right now. Here's seven things, and then I'm going to pray for you. Ask God to search you. Psalm 139, 23, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the path of everlasting. You have to ask God to search you. Now, when you ask God to search you, what's going to happen is he's going to start bringing things to your remembrance. When you open the door, anger, lust, bitterness, unforgiveness, he began to bring that up. It's, it, 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 it can't, when you ask God to do it, he's going to do it. So you just begin to ask him to show it to you. When he shows it to you, number two, confess what he shows you. Whoever conceals a transgression will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. You, the one person you shouldn't lie to is yourself. If you've got sin in your life, just tell yourself the truth. You don't want to walk through life lying. If something has been invading your space, Confess what he shows you. Three, capture it, uh, capture and bring it into his will. Capture everything that's opposed to his will and his word. Second Corinthians 10, 5. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion that raises itself up against the knowledge of God. Four, bind what you find. I will give you the keys to the kingdom and whatever you bind on earth will be as bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Five, cast it down. Take every thought captive and bring it into obedience. You put it in place like he was putting it into the abyss. Six, nail it. Galatians 5, 26, 23, 24. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with all his passions and desires. Seven, fill it. Ephesians 5.18, don't be drunk with wine, for that's debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, being filled with the Spirit. Acts 2 and 4, and they were all filled with the Spirit and began to speak with new tongues. So again, ask him to search you. Confess what he shows you. Capture anything opposed to his will or his word. Bind what, he, bind what you find. Cast it down, nail it to the cross, and be filled. Now, I'm going to pray a prayer of repentance over us, and then I'm going to get back here, and I'm going to get to pray prayers. Um, I'm, going to, um, I'm going to ask my ministry team to come front, come, come, come forward, and, I'll, and then they, they'll, they'll give, you, give you instructions. We did this in the other service. Nothing bad is going to happen to you. You can't ask God for something good, and he give you something bad. Freedom is not bad. The enemy will whisper that it's something bad or, or what's going to happen to me. We're not conjuring anything up. We're expelling things. Okay? That's what we're going to do. The Bible says, behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. You have power just like Jesus has power to get things out of you. Again, you might feel something bubble up on, in, in, on the inside of you. You might feel tremors. You might begin to weep. You might have things. As, and as, as you keep surrendering to God and saying, yes, it'll go. So bow your head, close your eyes, and just repeat after me for a minute. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. And I repent for my sins of omission and commission, for ignoring you, and for opening the door and open it a window that the enemy can come in. I've given him place in my life. But I take authority now in your name because I'm a believer. And Jesus is Lord of my life. He has no authority to say. So I bind him up. I take authority in my mind, in my spirit, and in my body in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to start casting them out, and I'm going to say several prayers. And all I want you to do is just pray in your seat. Just pray in your seat. That's all you do. And just let God. It's an individual thing. There's no looking around. There's nothing. Just you focus on God delivering you and setting you free. Right now, I break the hold of every evil spirit that is not from God. Spirits that tell you to call on them. That tell you that they are good and that God is bad. 
God is lying and he is not true, I, I bind up every one of those lying spirits and cast them out of the heart and the mind and the will. I break every spirit of the occult in Jesus' name, every spell, incantation, every hex, every curse, every word curse that's been spoken by others or been spoken by you, any agreement with words that don't come from God about identity, I break their hold in the name of Jesus. I break the, the spirit of a lust and fornication, the spirit of adultery, incubus, succubus, I cast out of the heart and the mind and the will. They are delivered and set free. We arrest you in the name of Jesus. Go back to the abyss. Get out, get out in the name of Jesus. Loose your hold. I break the hold of every lying spirit that tells you that you are a girl trapped in a boy's body or a boy trapped in a girl's body. I rebuke sexual confusion of every kind. I rebuke sexual attractions that are same sex I rebuke all perversion and debauchery in the name of Jesus I rebuke orgy spirits perverse spirits I rebuke the spirit of pornea pornography in the name of Jesus I break ungodly soul ties with people places things emotions I break ungodly friendships people who have led you into dark places and dark things with dark thoughts dark dreams I, I, and dark deeds I break ungodly vows, the vows you've made with your mouth, I, the things you said keep secret, keep shut up, keep some, I break the spirit of anger, I break the spirit of wrath in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody just take a deep breath in, blow out, take another deep breath in, blow out. Now just let God deal with you for a minute. Lord, I just take authority over every spirit. Every lying spirit that tells them they have to stay captive. Everyone that tells them to hold on, just, just endure this moment, but they don't have to change. I rebuke that spirit. God, we expel the spirit of the enemy from this house, from this place, from their life. God, even those occult items that are in their house, tarot cards, we bind them in the name of Jesus. Ouija boards, we bind it in the name of Jesus. Every Jezebelic spirit we bind up in the name of Jesus, a Jezebel spirit in a man or a woman. Every Ahab spirit we bind it up in the name of Jesus. Every Leviathan spirit we bind up in the name of Jesus. Every Python spirit we bind it up in the name of Jesus. God, we expel it out of the heart, the mind, and the will. Take a deep breath in. Blow out. And even as we're praying, stay in the spirit of prayer. If you've got something that's a stronghold on you that you don't feel like you can break free from on your own, all you're going to do is raise your hand and the ministers that's up here are going to gently come to you and pr come pray with you where you're at so you don't have to move. So if you got your hand up, they'll just begin to see you and they'll come to you. Go there, go there. Just put your hands up. We're going to come help you and pray for you right there. Just, we're just coming right now. Jody, you're going to have to help pray. Matt, you're going to have to help pray. You're going to have to help pray, Maddie. Layman's, you're going to have to help pray. Just stay in the spirit of prayer. I rebuke the spirit of distraction, the spirit of onlooking and gawking. Let everybody be free. Focus on yourself. Focus on yourself. Focus on what's after you. In Jesus' name, just keep your hand up. We'll get to you. Right back here. Uh, sir, right back here. Just keep your hand up. Freedom's here for you. Break free. Break free. Some of you need to just say it out of your mouth, Lord. You just, just begin to mutter under your breath. Confess. When you confess, some you might feel like you're coughing. You might feel like you want to throw up. You want to yawn. That's all right. Focus on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Jesus heals you. Jesus delivers you. Jesus frees you. It is Jesus. He is the author. He is the finisher. He is the first. He is the last. It is Jesus. He is doing it. He can do it. Break free. Every perverse spirit, go in Jesus' name. Every one of the spirits that's getting you into addiction, I come against alcoholism right now in the name of Jesus. 
Even if you have somebody in your family that's struggling with alcoholism, just like Jesus stepped into the demoniac's life, you can send a prayer, begin to pray for them in this environment right now. I rebuke that spirit, that addiction on alcoholism, those who have drug problems, and those who are, are just always intoxicated in the name of Jesus. Be free, be free, be free, be free, be free, be free, focus, 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 close your eyes and focus on your life your life and what Jesus wants to do in your life ask him to search you 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 ask him to search you, him to search you. just keep your hand up if you got your if you still need somebody to come to you I will see you just keep your hand up right over here sir right over here keep with the hands up Right there in that cluster. Hey, Ernie, could you come help me? Right over here. It's a little while longer. Hold on. God's doing the work on the inside of you. God's doing the work on the inside of you. Let him work. Let him work. If somebody's not getting to you and you don't think I see you, just come up here and kneel and begin to pray by yourself. We'll be able to get to you. Don't worry. If you're in the middle of a section that's people on either side of you and you know you can't be gotten to, just stand up and walk out to the aisle. People will find you. Raise your hand. Come out to the middle aisle or step down into the front. Ministers will find you. They're all over the sanctuary. We're all ministers. Alien. Ordained by him in a way. If you're not being prayed for, this is your chance to pray for others. You intercede. Keep your hands intercede. up. I got people coming to you. Keep your when hands up. Two or three up, are gathered in his name. Yes, let that freedom come on you. Let that freedom come on you. Yay. I bind the spirit of homosexuality right now in the name of Jesus. It's not you. Your identity is in Christ. I bind it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's a bunch of college students over there. Keep your hand up, students. Don't, they had your hand up. I, I got people coming to you. Yeah, 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 Right here, in the EOR. Um, keep your hand up, I'll find you. Right here. The young lady right there, okay, good. Right here. That's good, yeah, that's all right. He loves you, he loves you. Jesus loves you, he's just setting you free. He's just setting you free. Don't focus on other people. Don't spectate. Just worship God. You may or may not have noticed in that passage, Jesus was saying, in other words, in a continual way, come out of him unclean spirit. And when it didn't come out, that's when he says, what's your name? Sometimes it doesn't happen immediately in a moment. So we're going to pause for a second. Sometimes there's hindrances in the person that they don't even know how to name yet. They have to come to a name for them. So we're going to keep this space sacred. That's what sanctuary means. We're setting this aside for him right now. If you have someone who's being prayed for near you, I just encourage you to stay where you are and pray on their behalf. Don't disturb that moment. If you came with someone, just stay and wait on them. Uh, and if this is new and strange for you, let me just say, all week long you're going to see on all of your streaming devices, on your TV, on your phone, all kinds of ways of speaking about spirits and everything else. And it won't seem strange to you. It'll just flow right past you as if it's normal. The one thing that's going to be made strange to you is God's perspective about the spirit realm. That is going to be mocked. It's going to be demeaned. And you're going to have thoughts come to your mind to doubt it and question it and wonder about it. But every other perspective you'll allow to run. That's that's part of the spirit pastor james is naming that is controlling so many of us and, and attacking our children 
our grandchildren, our nephews and nieces attacking us. It's a real thing. And we want to live in freedom this week. Of all weeks, we want to live in freedom this week. So we're going to leave this space sacred. I'm going to close the service and if it's time for you to go and you know that you've had your moment with God, you can slip out at any time you want. If you're a guest and this is new for you and you have all kinds of questions, that's going to designate this space over here where there's a blue circle with a B in it, the table, right where you see first time here, those banners coming out. We'll answer any question you have. We know this is a unique service. I'm going to pray over you. Then we'll be dismissed, but you stay in here and pray. We're not taking these prayer moments to any other space in the building. I want to give it